Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore for Simon Says Stamp and I have got a couple of one layer easy watercolor cards to share with you today featuring components from the Simon Says Stamp April 2020 card kit called Follow the Rainbows. One of the cards, the rainbow on the right, features one of the pre-made watercolor cards that comes in the kit and the other card, the girl with the umbrella, features the stamp set included in the kit. Both are one layer cards, meaning they are gonna be super easy to pop in the mail as they're not gonna have a lot of dimension and things on them that will make it difficult for them to go through the automated system at the post office. First, we are gonna start with the Count Your Rainbows watercolor card and start watercoloring this design with some Hero Arts liquid watercolors. I have sped up the video quite a bit today to make this a little bit faster. I did take quite a bit of time watercoloring and there were a couple of times that I probably should have let the color dry a little bit or hit it with a heat tool before watercoloring next to um, a section that might have already been wet. Um, you can see that there. I'm just going to dab that up where a little of the orange bled into the dandelion yellow. However, I would just kind of dab it up immediately either let that dry, I can come back to it in a little bit. I did that with the red where I wanted to darken that up a bit, and I did that with a couple of other colors as well. Another little tip is to not watercolor right next to each other. So I skipped from the dandelion yellow to the deep ocean color, and then I moved on to the letters in the open font letters in the sentiment. I am going to then watercolor all of these with the same colors that you can see in the rainbow. And in addition to that, we're also going to use pink. That's what I used for the letter T and we'll be using some deep teal. I am using a water brush pen to do my watercoloring today. I've added little drops of the color to my glass work surface and then I'm picking it up with a water brush pen and painting it on. I made sure to kind of squeeze out a lot of that excess water out of the tip of my brush, and I am constantly removing excess from that on my microfiber cloth there so that the color is nice and vibrant. Now you'll notice that some of that green bled into the yellow on the rainbow. I waited until that was dry to come back in and try to kind of pick up or move some of that color out so that it's really pretty yellow and doesn't have those little green streaks in it. I'm going to watercolor the letters also in rainbow moving through here using all of the same colors from the rainbow itself and then as I mentioned I did pull in a little pink and a little deep teal. Also taking that deep teal and really watering it down with excess water so it's not as vibrant and it gives a little bit more of a washed out look for the sky. The card looks beautiful, watercolored as is, but I think the blue really makes everything pop. And again, I added a lot of water to this to watercolor in that background. And I want to make sure and go all the way around everything. I am leaving a little space all the way around as a natural border so that I don't have to trim this down and mat it on an, addi on an additional color. Um, don't forget any of those little spaces like in the inside of the letter O or um, around the where the C and the O meet. Any of those little things like that. And I just kept adding water and blending this out. And after I do this background, I did let this completely sit and dry. Um, I'm going to come back to it a little bit later, and then I'll finish doing the watercolor. And again, I will let that sit and completely air dry. If I can, I prefer to let any cards like this air dry as opposed to hitting them with a heat tool. But you can do either one. 
if I am watercoloring like when I was working on the rainbow portion of this and I wanted to dry it a little bit quicker so that I could watercolor right next to it a section that was still wet, I would hit it with a heat tool so that I could go back in and not worry about that color bleeding in or bleeding together. Around the word thunderstorms, we do want to make sure that we get all of those little bits and pieces, um, insides of the letters and everything around that so it really pops. And the difference that the wash, the blue wash around the background makes, I think is very significant. Next, everything is dry, so we are just going to go in and just keep adding color to our letters. And I'm adding just a little extra color here. And finish watercoloring all of our sentiment. I did want to add just a little something to those clouds as I felt like they needed just a little something but I don't want them to be like completely blue or anything like that where they blend in to the blue of our background. So what I ended up doing was taking just a tiny touch of the color and I'm going to paint that around the edges and then I'm going to clean the tip of my water brush pen really, really good and take a lot of water and pull that color out and blend it all the way out into the clouds to really give it a nice soft washed look. If there are any elements on your card, like I didn't really particular particularly like the red in the word count. I thought it was a little too washed out. I went back over that with another layer and it really added and darkened up that letter so it looks a lot better to my eye. And here's that wash around the clouds and just pulling that color up. Now what's really important when you're completely done watercoloring, let this dry all the way or hit it with your heat tool before adding any additional embellishment. Now the key to these cards is they are one layer. How I'm going to add some embellishment to these is with some Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard, which is that iridescent clear sparkly color, or not color, I guess it's a lack of color, iridescent sparkle. Um, it's going to go on, kind of have a little bit of a milky look to it, but when it dries it's completely clear with sparkle. And we are going to hit any of those areas where there's a little slight outline, so around the clouds, around the letters, um, in the rainbow itself, there's some little sections where it kind of has that overlap type of look. And we will add that to it so it has some nice sparkle and we're going to let that completely dry. For the custom one layer watercolor background with the image from the Follow the Rainbow stamp set, we are going to stamp this on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of watercolor cardstock. I used the smoother side of the cardstock using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and we'll be using the same Hero Arts liquid watercolors to color this image. Again, the key to this, I really kind of played off of the theme and title of the April card kit, Follow the Rainbows, and so this is going to have lots of rainbows in this card design, just like the pre-made panel. We're going to rainbow the entire umbrella using strawberry, pink, orange, dandelion, leaf, deep teal, deep ocean, and purple liquid watercolors. So I am skipping around so that the sections dry. We've done our strawberry, dandelion, deep teal, and also purple sections of the umbrella, so kind of every other one. And then I will go in and paint the additional sections. This is the orange. And it did end up bleeding because I don't think the strawberry was all the way dry. So I'm gonna dab that up and we're just gonna let this dry and come back with some additional strawberry liquid watercolor later and color or paint right over that so that section is nice and dark red. Then we have a little bit of the leaf color.
We also have the Deep Ocean, which is more of the primary bluish color. And from here, I actually skipped to painting the background. I'm going to give that umbrella a chance to dry all the way before we come back and finish with the pink section. I wanted to do something a little different than blue for the background here. So we're going to take black liquid watercolor and add even more water than we did for the blue background because um, I don't want it to overpower. And there are some elements that I do want to paint with the black liquid watercolor. So to do this, we need to add tons of water and then really work to give a nice washed out light gray background all the way around. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of a edge. I'm not going clear to the edge of my background panel when adding this color. And we're going to go all the way around. I have not added my sentiment yet. I opted to save that until after I have watercolored the entire background. We will stamp the sentiment on top and I'm actually going to paint the sentiment over this very light gray washed background and you'll see that you get fantastic results doing that and you don't have to worry about going around each individual letter with our background. So now that we have our background wash all done, make sure and let that dry all the way and then we can finish painting our beautiful girl image with the umbrella. I love that there's all kinds of different sentiments in this Follow the Rainbow stamp set, so you can really use any of these kind of encouragement, thinking of you type of sentiments. And we will paint her high heels with the black. It does look very, very dark when it goes on wet, but you'll see more of the definition of the high heels once that dries, and we're also gonna use the black on the belt. So that's where I'm not using near as much water because I want those to be black and not that gray wash of the background. Same color, just um, a little bit more water used with the background there. That is the pink section of the umbrella all finished. And then we want to go over the deep teal section. I felt like it was really kind of light and not as vibrant as I wanted it to be. So I added a little extra color there. And then we need to finish coloring in. I It looks like it can be a dress or a raincoat. I kind of did it more along the lines of a raincoat. So I'm going to paint that with dandelion yellow. And I did add in tiny touches of orange and even some cocoa brown to add a little bit more dimension to this, but the main color of this is that dandelion color. We're gonna mix deep teal and black for the puddle she's standing in. I didn't want it to be too bright and vibrant, but I didn't want it to be completely black or completely blue. Same thing with any of the raindrops in the background. And once the raincoat has dried a little bit, we can go back in and add some additional shading with more color. For the legs, we are using cocoa. And I kind of kept layering on this same color to deepen and darken the skin color. Once we have that all done, I'm going to let this completely dry all the way, make sure any little bits and pieces do have color. I think I went back over the raindrops. They didn't have, they were a little too washed out and I added more concentration of that deep teal to those. And then we are ready to stamp our sentiment and paint the rainbow colors in the open font of the Thinking of You sentiment. So I'm going to line these two up in my Misty, stamp these with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, 
and the G slightly overlaps the umbrella there, which is intentional. I like that, how it's kind of cozied up close together. And then we will simply paint the letters with all of these same colors of ink. So again, it's the pink, strawberry, orange, dandelion, leaf, deep teal, deep ocean, and purple liquid watercolors. These had dried on my work surface and I reactivated them with a little bit of water. If they aren't maybe concentrated enough, you can always just get a little bit more of your liquid watercolor and paint back over them, I would suggest after they have dried so that it doesn't just kind of keep washing out. Just layer another bit of color on top. I did that for a couple of these. Then you're gonna to want to let that completely dry or hit it with a heat tool to speed up the process before finishing with a layer of Nouveau White Blizzard drops there over the top. And I wanted my sentiment to be sparkly, the raindrops to be sparkly, and then the center of my umbrella. So all of those little places will have a touch of sparkle. Both panels will be attached to white top fold card bases and some additional little droplets will be placed around the rainbow background to finish the card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these two one layer watercolor backgrounds featuring components from the Simon Says Stamp April 2020 card kit. The supplies I used to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.